You're watching NFL Daily. Mitchell Renz here, ready to walk you guys through our NFL MVP power rankings after the first week of the season. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to go from 10 and we're going to go all the way down to 1. But you're going to see some names or you're not going to see some names on this list because basically what I'm basing this on is simply performances from week 1. So if you want to yell at me, you can do it down in the comments. So early, come on. Let me know, who is the NFL MVP after the first week of the National Football uh, season? I mean, there's a lot of good games out there. There's a lot of good quarterback play. Spoiler alert, you're going to see a lot, a lot of quarterbacks on today's show. At number 10, I'm going to go with Teddy Bridgewater, quarterback of the Denver Broncos. I was impressed by the way that he played. And I was impressed by the way that he handled himself and how he just took care of the football. The Broncos ended up beating the Giants 27-13. to Bridgewater was 28-36 for 264 yards. He had two touchdowns, no interceptions. One of the biggest reasons why I put him on this list here is because Denver, realistically, they just needed to have a quarterback that doesn't turn the ball over, that can take care of it, and lean on that solid defense. Teddy, he had a 95.7 QBR, which led all quarterbacks in the first week. So for that reason, I'm going to tip my cap to him. At number nine, Jalen Hurts. If there's been one person who's been ripping on Hurts the more this entire offseason, it's been me. And I thought that he played well. Was he going up against a weak Falcons defense? Sure. But the win 32 to 6, that's not a fluke. He was 27 to 35, 264 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. But he also had 62 rushing yards. If you drafted him in fantasy leagues, sure, you're going to be really, really excited about that. But one of my biggest knocks on Hurts was his ability to be able to read defenses quickly. And I thought that he showed pretty good defense recognition right away and wasn't committed to just running ASAP. Now, I'm going to see what he does coming up in week two because he's not going up against the Atlanta Falcons. At number eight here in my NFL MVP power rankings, Dak Prescott. One of the biggest notions for you to win MVP in a season a lot of times is you got to be a quarterback, and a lot of times you got to win games. Dak Prescott's going to be the only person on this list that had a losing game in week one. But the reason why he made it, he was 42 of 58, 403 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. I, I saw no setbacks whatsoever from his arm. I thought the arm talent looked there. His, his running ability, to me, did look a little bit slower than usual. But Dak has the second most passing yards in the NFL after week one. This dude, I believe, was on pace for like six. 6,700 yards last season, and if he's going to throw the ball as much as the Cowboys are expecting him, or if he's going to throw it 58 times a week, he's going to put up ridiculous numbers, and the fact that he's the Cowboys quarterback, that's going to put him a little bit higher in this list. At number seven, Jameis Winston. Yes, famous Jameis. Again, these rankings are solely based on what I saw from week one. Let's face it. If Josh Allen plays the way that he did every single game this entire year, he's not going to be on the list. So the Saints beat the Packers 38-3. When you go up against the reigning NFL MVP and you beat that team by 35 points, that deserves some credit. He also took care of the football, 14 to 20. Yes, Jameis, 14 to 20, 148 yards. It's not a lot, but he had five touchdowns. He currently leads the NFL in passing touchdowns. If he can continue to take care of the football, and if he can continue to not, you know, throw picks basically, which is what he's known for, and lean on this defense, the Saints are going to be a tough team to beat. So I'm going to give a lot, a lot of credit to Jameis Winston because I also know this. If his name would be Drew Brees and he would put up those numbers, everybody, and I mean everybody, would be 100% okay with this. Now, if you don't like this or if you see one of the players like, okay, man, like I'm totally on board, I want you to share this on Twitter because I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be very controversial about this video. So let's get this bad boy viral. I want you to click that share button underneath this, select the Twitter icon and then click post to Twitter. Let me know what you're thinking. If you want to go ahead and tag me at Mitchell Ren365, I'd appreciate it. At number six here, it's the Las Vegas Raiders quarterback, Derek Carr, who currently right now leads the league with 435 passing yards. The reason why Derek made this list because it was an incredible Monday night football game up against another former NFL MVP, Lamar Jackson. In a 33-27 to overtime win, when it mattered the most, Derek Carr was very, very clutch. 34-56, sure not great. He also started 3 of 11. He looked really, really rusty in the beginning of this game. The one interception, that was on Willie Sneed. It went right through his hands, hit the defender in the head, bounced up in the air. But really, when you saw... 
the ups and downs of this game, all Derek did just time after time was lead a drive that tied the game, lead the drive to tie the game. Then he let another drive that probably should have won it, but because of some penalties and because of a bad pick, not on his part or Willie Sneed's part, didn't get it. And then the very next time, leads the team back down the field again and scores a touchdown. So Derek Carr, number six on my list. Now, before I show you more of my players here in terms of my top NFL MVP candidates after the first week, how about an update, a look at some NFL MVP odds. So Patrick Mahomes at plus 350. Tom Brady at plus 700. Dak Prescott, Matthew Stafford, Kyler Murray. Here are your top five. Russell Wilson at plus 1,200. Spoiler alert, you're not going to see Aaron Rodgers. You're not going to see Josh Allen. You're not going to see Lamar Jackson on my list simply because, let's face it, they did not play good enough that first game to be on this list. Simple as that. Now, if you want to go ahead and bet on who you think is going to win the NFL MVP, you can go ahead and do so at chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code NFL Daily. It's going to get you 125% deposit bonus. Mitch, what the heck does that mean? It means if you put down $100, you get $125 for free to bet with. It also means if you put down up to $500, you can get $625 for free to bet with. Sounds pretty good, right? What about this? A little cherry on top. If you go ahead and make your very first bet at chatsports.com slash bet and use the promo code, just put down like $5 on one random week two game. If you go ahead and do that and you're a first time bet US user, we're also going to get you a free jersey. Now, our inventory, we have jerseys for all 32 teams, but it's also select jerseys. So, all I'm saying is email us at jersey at chatsports.com when you go ahead and get started at BetUS and put down a $5 bet for you new users and let us know what jersey you want. We might not have the exact one. Now, all the ones that you guys see over here to my right, we have all of those. But if you're looking for like a Jeremy Chugg's 40 Houston Texans jersey, I don't think I'm going to have that one. I'm just going to be honest with you. But we have a lot of other jerseys out there. So, email us if you have any questions about this deal. It's also not going to last forever. The deal ends Monday. So you're watching this now. When's Monday? September 20... September what? 20th, I think is when it ends? Yeah. September 20th. We're going to go with that. So that's when the deal ends. Take advantage of it now. Email me if you have any questions. Jersey at chatsports.com. Let's now get into the top five. One of the jerseys you can get for free is Tom Brady. So Brady, I, I was very impressed. I mean, I was, thought it was funny the amount of times that I heard that he was 44. Probably heard it 44 times on that live broadcast. But he threw the ball very, very well. 31 to 29 victory. And he was 32 of 50, 379 yards, four touchdowns, two picks. I thought one of the picks obviously really wasn't on him simply because he threw a Hail Mary and I mean, the fact that he can even throw it that far at his age is very impressive. But he's the only quarterback in week one that had over 300 passing yards and four touchdowns. The bottom line is this. If the Tampa Bay Buccaneers continue to look like one of the best teams in the league, that's obviously just going to push Brady higher and higher up there. And when it's basically all on him and all the receivers that he has, Brady, he deserves to be on this. At number four, and this is where it got really, really difficult for me, Kyler Murray. I really wanted to be able to put Murray at number two, but I just I had the other two guys a little bit higher. I thought they were a little bit more efficient. Now, one of the most impressive games of this entire week was how bad the Cardinals beat the Tennessee Titans 38-13 to in Nashville. Murray was 21-32. 289 yards, four touchdowns. He had an interception, but he also had 20 rushing yards and a touchdown. Now, some of you are like, wait a minute, Mitch. How can he not be higher? The interception me was bad, and he's had some inconsistent play at times. Plus, I also thought Tennessee just showed up, and they were just super, super flat. I was never really impressed by that defense ultimately, and Murray and the Cardinals had a perfect game plan. But if you had him, him in fantasy, I believe he was the number one most uh, – he scored the most fantasy points this week. It was something like 35. Dude's incredible. At number three, it's Russell Wilson. Will he finally get an MVP vote? Man, I don't know. But if you want to talk about efficiency, this is like the most typical Russell Wilson game you could possibly get. 18 of 23, 254 yards, four touchdowns. He had the second highest quarterback rating of 152.3. For those of you that don't know, a perfect quarterback rating is 158.3. I don't know why it's that random number. That's just the way it is. But when you really think about what is an MVP, most valuable player, I say this all the time here at Chat Sports. I don't know if there is a more important player to the entire team than Russell Wilson. Because if, if the Seahawks lose Wilson, they're going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL. But the fact that they have him, the fact that he was able to lead another big-time victory up against Indianapolis, hey, man, uh, he's number three on my list. Now, some of you are like, wait a minute, all you have is quarterbacks. Well, the reason 
is because when you look at the last 10 years of NFL MVPs, 9 out of the 10 have been quarterbacks. So here are the last 5. Rodgers, Jackson, Mahomes, Brady, Matt Ryan. Obviously, Brady, he won this one with the Patriots, right? And then from 2015 to 2011, Cam Newton with the Carolina Panthers. Peyton Manning with the Denver Broncos in 2013. Adrian Peterson has been the lone running back out of this group. And realistically, he probably could have won it another year as well. So here are all the past NFL MVPs and the reason why... I have all the top 10 as all quarterbacks is because guess what? The way the NFL works right now, it's probably going to be a quarterback. And again, if you want to go ahead and make a bet, you are probably bet on a quarterback. Now, if you want to yell at me from any of the rankings that you saw on today's show, hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRens365. I would love for you guys to rip on me. And if you want to go ahead and rip on Jeremy as well, you can go ahead and do so on Twitter at JIBeadling. The bottom line is this. We love what we do here at Chat Sports. If you want to give us some extra show ideas during the season, please, his DMs, my DMs, they're open for a reason. At number two, Matthew Stafford. And if there was one quarterback that I was really confused about, like how he was going to play in a new city, it was definitely Stafford. So the Rams, they took care of the Bears 34 to 14. Chicago's got a good defense. I do think that they're a little bit of an overrated defense simply because they're the Chicago Bears and people just associate good defenses with that franchise. But he was 20 of 26. 321 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. He had the highest quarterback rating out of anybody in the entire league, 156.1. That's just about nearly perfect. That's why I had Stafford over Murray, over Wilson, because he was just a lot more efficient. And sure, he didn't have as many fantasy points as Kyler Murray. He didn't have as many total touchdowns. But when he threw the ball, it was crisp. It looked really good. And that team, man... If he plays like that, they are going to be one of the toughest teams to beat simply because that defense, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, good luck. So what do you guys think about this? Should my list be just quarterbacks? Do you think that I should have put a defensive player in there like Chandler Jones who had five sacks? Do you think I should have put a wide receiver in here like Tyreek Hill who had almost 200 receiving yards. Let me know down. I mean, I am all for it. The reason why I didn't do it is because I know how the NFL works, and if certain guys aren't going to win the MVP after like a season like Chris McCaffrey had two years ago, I don't know if anybody's ever going to make it. At number one, no surprise here for a lot of people, it's Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes and this Chiefs team... They looked rusty that first half, and I was like, oh, man, we could be talking about a major Super Bowl hangover, and I thought that this was a team that would never be able to be hungover. But when you watch Mahomes, when you watch the Chiefs, this team, when they get it clicking, there's nothing that can stop them. He was 27-36, 337 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. But the fact that they were able to outscore the Browns 23-7 to in the second half, to me, when I think of an NFL MVP, I think of when your team's back against the wall, when everyone around you seems absolutely hopeless, and then all you got to do is snap your fingers, turn it on, and then nobody can stop you. That's exactly what you saw from Mahomes, from that Chiefs offense. I'm also going to tip my cap to Kelsey, Tyreek Hill. He has unbelievable playmakers around him. But let's be honest, Patrick Mahomes probably should be the front runner here after the first week of football. So let's go through these one more time here. We're going to go from 10 all the way down to number 1. If you disagree with anything that you saw on today's show, please yell at me on IG, MitchellRens365 or yell at Jeremy on Twitter at JIBeadling. If you made it this far again and you're like, you know what? You guys are doing something halfway decent around here. Don't ever forget like the video because believe it or not Liking the video really, really helps us out a lot. So then the top five, I don't really think there's too much a debate of these top five quarterbacks in terms of being the NFL MVP power rankings. Remember, I did it based on week one stats and week one stats alone. Next week, I'm going to do it on week one and week two stats alone. So nothing against Josh Allen, nothing against Lamar Jackson or Aaron Rodgers. The way they played in week one, they didn't deserve to make this list. All right, y'all, so who deserves to be on my list of NFL MVP candidates after the first week of the season? Let me know. Who do I miss? I mean, there's so many players. There's so many guys that you can throw into this mix, and obviously putting every single guy in there is not easy. But let me know who deserves to be on my list. 